10 minutes left, uh, a little less than that. The stocks have got a chance to pull off a positive day. If they can just add on a few more basis points, doesn't look like it needs much. Nate Peterson joins us, Director of Derivatives Analysis, the Schwab Center for Financial Research, to paint the big picture for us going into a week. They could get interesting here, Nate. I mean, we get a lot of big economic data and some earnings still lingering, most of that done with, but it seems maybe a potential for us to refocus on the economy. Yeah, and, and Oliver, I think as long as the data comes in in the sense that it's soft or it's cool, but it's not cold, you know, nothing is dramatic in terms of uh, outlier uh, data points. And so we've seen encouraging trends in inflation. Uh, I think the bulls are comfortable with a little bit of slack showing up there in the labor market. If that could continue, I think they're fine with that. So anything that basically points to the narrative that this soft landing uh, can be achieved and there's nothing that's a great outlier, uh, we've got bullish momentum. The technical has been improving. We've got bullish seasonality. We've got yields on the tenure that continue to come down. I think the presumption is if we continue to have this cool data that's going to be coming in, yields will continue to come down as well, which will therefore kind of validate uh, equities to rise. We know that inverse relationship with their valuation. The bond move today seemed like it got some support from the auction and generally our selling of treasuries seems to have been pretty well absorbed these last few auctions, Nate. Well, um, so did the doomsayers get um, disproven here? Well, it might be a little bit early to say because we know that there's still going to be a lot of issuance that's going to be coming down the pipes here in the coming quarters. So we'll keep an eye on that. But, you know, technically, and you can use technicals on the 10-year yield chart, for example, uh, we know that we broke the uh, 50 simple day moving average there earlier this month, and my question was, okay, that can suggest when you have a longer uptrend that is rising like that and you break it, that can suggest that there might be a change in trend. Now you can go from an uptrend to sideways or an uptrend to a downtrend, and it looks like it's been into a downtrend. This 10 year is gonna be trying to price in basically a Fed policy and potential Fed cuts. Obviously this is a 10 year yield, so it's possible this could continue to come in provided that uh, the economic data supports that. And that would just be uh, enough, at least for the bulls, to kind of push the market a little bit higher towards the end of the year. Let's keep in mind though, e you know, Oliver, if, you're, if you think there's a recession or if you wanna be a bear, that's one thing, but you can still be near-term bullish towards the end of the year because right now it feels like the path of least resistance is still a little bit up in this melt-up mode. We got 4,600 on the S&P 500, that's going to be a key level to watch if and when we get there in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, let's talk the technical stuff uh, for a moment to your point about the chart, just the path of least resistance right now favoring the upside. Uh, we're still below the records. I mean, we're dabbling with it basically for the NASDAQ, but the S&P is still a good chunk of ways, right? So, I mean, I guess there's some real potential resistance at the all-time, all-time highs. For sure, yeah. I mean, it's basically, how do we define resistance? It's it's wherever sellers stepped in in the past. For whatever reason, they decided that those price levels on the underlying or the index uh, represented a level that uh, was not desirable and therefore selling kicked in. If you look at the charts, yes, we have the all-time high around 4,800, but that 4,600 is key. We backed off of this level twice back in early 2022 in both February and March which established it at a, as a resistance level. This year, as we were rising throughout the summer, we came right back up to that 4,600, pulled back again. We're about, what, 50 points away or so from it uh, as we stand right now, so not that far. That'll be a great test if we can eclipse it. Uh, that's just uh, a little bit more of the fuel to go along with the, the seasonality and the momentum. Yeah, all right. Uh, so we get through there, and then it might just be like busting down the door, uh, everyone trying to get through. Uh, it's hard not to kind of visualize a scenario like that when NVIDIA is hanging out near the highs. We've already gotten the record numbers uh, for Microsoft and for NVIDIA breaking out. As far as earnings go, we're going to talk Zscaler this afternoon. There's some cloud companies still left to report. Fundamentally, earnings have already pretty much been completed. But this is an interesting group because it's kind of a high growth, low profitability cohort that's coming up here in the next couple of weeks, Nate. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think if you look back at this quarter, you know, what stood out to me is there were several companies, be it Shopify, be it Adobe, be it GitLab, a lot of these uh, tech companies are basically validating that there's more to this AI story than just NVIDIA, which is very healthy. Then you go back to NVIDIA's report, they nailed it. You know, they did great. The stock didn't perform that well. It is kind, kind of hanging around there right now, but I think that in terms of that narrative, it just seems like it's intact and it's healthy, meaning that there is potential for that to add to the bottom line in the coming quarters and the years. And so is valuation a concern? Yeah, we're probably fully valued, but in the near term, that doesn't really matter as long as yields are coming down and we continue to get uh, uh, some uh, validation of this AI growth story for the tech sector. All right, great stuff. Uh, thanks for that uh, context fundamentally and technically for stocks. Nate Peterson, Director of Derivatives Analysis at the Schwab Center for Financial Research.